Okay, thank you. I'm here to endorse a great patriot because everything I believe in, he's doing and he's going to do it when he becomes president. When Sheriff Joe gives you an endorsement, you know you're the king of the border, right? Because their fear of returning to their country is so real, they decide to come here. We're seeing the detention system balloon. Why are we in this business? U.S. immigration history is not about the nation of immigrants. It really is about keeping out people we see as outsiders. Known as America's toughest sheriff for his crackdowns on illegal immigration and petty crime. When I ran for office in 1992, I made a promise. I will put up Korean War tents and get tough on crime. I had 150 of my deputies and officers on the streets uh, locking up uh, smugglers and illegal immigrants. Very controversial. He ran an outdoor jail called Tent City. He makes his inmates wear pink. He uses chain gangs. It resulted in multiple lawsuits and a lot of death, especially by suicide. I go in there, it's 130 degrees. Probably would get someone else defeated. I keep getting reelected. Why is it that uh, all these presidential candidates come, they want my endorsement, they come to the jails, oh, we love this place. If I'm the president, we're going to operate just like uh, he does. That means the federal prisons all will operate like I run the jails. Why do they say that? If it's so bad or not bad? So that's a good question that I'm asking myself, right? Sheriff Joe Arpaio was found guilty of federal criminal contempt for racial profiling while in office. Now he could spend time in jail himself. It's hard labor, haircuts, bologna sandwiches, 35 cent meals. And the bottom line is if you don't want to do the time, don't do the crime. If you don't want to do the time, don't do the crime. Does that apply to you too? That's if you did a crime if you're found guilty. So, was Sheriff Joe convicted for doing his job? That's what... I'll make a prediction. I think he's going to be just fine, okay? Be it known that this day, I, Donald Trump, President of the United States, and had granted unto Joseph M. Arpaio a full and unconditional pardon. Clearly, Donald Trump admired what Sheriff Arpaio had been doing. That kind of straight talk encapsulated this idea that, you know, there would be a new sheriff in town on immigration matters and that things were going to change. Who would be the new sheriff in town? Donald Trump. <laughs> the Trump administration has been clear. Immigrants in the country illegally, quote, should be afraid. Arrests by federal immigration agents are way up. Since the president took office, immigration arrests have surged nearly 40%. Pardoning Joe Arpaio sends a very clear message to ICE agents, which is, as far as President Trump is concerned, ICE agents would simply be doing their job by arresting people without being overly concerned about individuals' due process rights. Federal agents are arresting more unauthorized immigrants who don't have criminal records. The Department of Homeland Security has begun laying the groundwork to do more. How's it going? Good, how are you, sir? Good, thank you. People that were arrested are booked in to this area, be fingerprinted, 
and then they go to various cells, but this is just what we refer to as our processing area. By doing this work, we believe we're preventing crime from occurring by removing these threats. So if you're a, a habitual uh, DUI offender, if I remove you to your home country, now you're not, be, you're not able to commit that crime in the United States. So I don't think ICE gets a lot of credit for prevention of crime. The majority of people that we have in custody come from the country of Guatemala. They generally claim asylum when they're in a detention setting. It's very high with the family units. I would say 95% of them claim asylum. You'll see uh, slip-on shoes. We take their shoelaces away from them. It's a suicide risk. We do give them snacks and food, microwavable burritos, chocolate chip Quaker Chewy bars, and even grandma's cookies. When you see ICE arresting people, you should understand that they're probably going to immigration detention. Thousands of people are being held for prolonged periods of time. They're not there because they've committed a crime. They're there because the government is civilly detaining them in order to pursue their deportations. Under the Trump administration, we're seeing the detention system balloon. But we have to recognize that Trump inherited an enormous detention deportation machine that Obama drove with the pedal to the metal. Congress in 1996 passed these two laws that basically took the number of ways someone could be deported and expanded them drastically. Our administration has moved aggressively to secure our borders more by deporting twice as many criminal aliens as ever before. After the 1996 laws, the immigration detention system starts to grow. We went from the low thousands to between 40 and 50,000 people detained per day. Cuando yo llegué, me quitaron mi nombre y me dieron un número 318. Tuve que esperar dos años y un mes. Pasaron dos años y no vi a mis hijas. Ahora tengo una visa, una visa de tráfico de personas. Murieron dos personas cuando estaba yo en la detención. Uno eh, murió porque se metió el calcetín por la boca. Y después los calcetines ya no eran los mismos, eran más pequeños. Yo vi eh, la desesperación. Y lo he is one of the deadliest detention centers in the country. We've seen over 10 deaths in the last 10 years. More immigrants have died in that detention center than any other detention center in the country. Detention settings, there are a number of risks. That, I think, is something that weighed heavy on me when I was actually a director, is saying the life and safety of these people is in our hands. And there are safer, more humane ways of doing this that are no less tough. If you're dangerous, you stay in, no question about it. But we detain lots of people who are not dangerous and aren't a flight risk, and it, it makes no sense to me. We have new technology, ankle bracelets and things, where for $2 a day, we can let someone stay at home until their hearing is done, and it wouldn't weaken our enforcement system one, one bit. I guess my point, though, is rather than look at any specific case and say, well, why did this go this way? We should ask ourselves a larger question, which is, why are we in this business? What do we get out of this? And it's just the politics of it, right? The politics, public likes to hear the tension. Sounds tough. You have to send a message out. One thing I like about the president, he said, anybody coming across, you're going to jail. That keeps people from coming across. Anyone who illegally crosses the border will be detained. When people know that they're not going to be immediately released, then they're going to think twice about coming to the United States only to be kept in detention and returned. It's not an attractive option anymore.
Right now, I'm heading to the Humanitarian Aid Center. I'm going there to meet with a migrant woman from Guatemala. Um, she has expressed that she wants to seek asylum to the U.S. and I'm going to meet with her to let her know about her rights. O sea, a mi hija y a mi mamá las estoy dejando. Era que me quedara allá o que me mataran. Lo más posible es que sí la manden al centro de detención, que se llama Iloy. Yo sé que usted tiene esperanza, ¿verdad? Y yo no le quiero matar esa esperanza. Pero sí siento que es mi responsabilidad decirle una estadística. Sí. Aproximadamente el 90% de los casos uh -huh. los niegan. va a ser difícil y pensando sabiendo todo eso que todavía quiere entregarse sí sí they come with such hope that they're going to tell US immigration officials about everything they have suffered and I tell them that they're going to be at Eloy Detention Center for at least six months. But even knowing that, because their fear of returning to their country is so real, even knowing that, they decide to come here and fight their case in detention. Sheriff Joe, I was just wondering, um, since the illegals keep re-entering, you know, you can drop them off and they keep coming back in, are you or do you plan on using some of these concentration camps to hold them because they keep re-entering and killing us? I already have a concentration camp. Andy, you're going to cover me on this, too? <laughs> it's called Tent City. <laughs> you said... The tent city is a concentration camp. Okay, I said it one time coming out at an Italian-American club, but you know what? I'm not going to back down. So what? Maybe it is a concentration camp. I don't want to make it look nice like the Hilton Hotel. I want to say it's a tough place so people don't want to come there. Do you think that voters want to see a Sheriff Arpaio-style toughness on immigration enforcement from President Trump? Yeah, I think that if the wall is a symbol of border security and immigration enforcement, they understand that detention is a brick in that wall. What is deportation and why did we invent it as a system in the United States? U.S. immigration history is not about the nation of immigrants. It really is about defining who we are as a country and keeping out people we see as outsiders. This is a story of race in America that's unbroken from the late 19th century. The only thing that's changed is that in the 1890s, the principal targets were Chinese immigrants. Today, the principal targets are Latinos. That is what Arpaio articulates so well. He is a pivotal part of the project of making America great again through race-based immigration control. Several hundred Republicans gathered tonight to listen to controversial Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio speak at a Fresno fundraiser. How many enchiladas would you like, sir? One. One. Thank you. Enjoy. As you're eating good Mexican for you, you should also be entertained by some good Mexican music. And our good Sheriff Arpaio is no stranger to some good Mexican music. And so we have some Mexican music playing in the background. Enjoy. I work in a hospital and uh, we see the majority, I would say, of our, our clientele are uh, Hispanic. I would suspect a lot are illegal. I think they should be deported. They're, we're a nation of laws. They should follow the laws. That's what we're about. 
That's what our country's about. I know they said that, you know, he was, you know, racially po profiling, but he was doing his job. He had his people doing his job. They were, you know. Sheriff Joe Arpaio signed, Sheriff's bad. <laughs> all right, thank you. So you're all, anybody kneeling around here? <laughs> When they can't get you on uh, one thing, they always call you a racist. They don't even know how to spell the name. You know, I finally found my hero. It took me 85 years to do that. And that happens to be our president. Sheriff Joe Arpaio, we've just learned that he's going to run for Senate in Arizona. You're kind of reintroducing yourself to the voters there. Do you have any regret? Well, you know, Frank Sinatra says in my way regrets. I've had a few, too few to mention, and I'll re repeat that to you. That's my favorite song, My Way. And I'm happy that the president sang to my way at the inauguration. He and I both traveled the same highway together without knowing it, but we did it just by by fate.